Hey everyone, welcome back to the third episode of Roblox Studio Scripting Tutorials. Today we're going to be learning how to make a wrecking ball that falls and knocks over loads of blocks when you click a button. So we're going to be using click detectors, we're going to be doing a little bit of scripting, and we obviously need to create the wrecking ball, and I might make it so that the wrecking ball kills me when it hits me, or deals damage, um, but that will just be an extra bit if we've got time. Okay, so first, let's create the actual wrecking ball and the button that we're going to click. So to do that, I'm going to right click, insert part, and I'm going to use this one as the button. So I'm going to make it green to go, I'm going to change its size to be 2x1x2, two one two. and I'm just going to call it button. So now I'm going to duplicate it with Control D, and this part is going to be the part which I hang the wrecking ball off of. It's going to be black, and I'll only make it small, it's not an important feature. And let's move it, mm, let's move it 30 blocks in the air. Awesome. Okay, so we've got the part that our wrecking ball is going to go off. I'm just going to quickly anchor both of these uh, so that nothing's falling around. Um, name this second part hanger. Okay, so now I'm going to create the actual ball. So to do that, I'm just going to duplicate again. And let's change the shape to be ball. And let's make this... How about 10? Is that enough? 10 blocks looks good. Uh, let's make it something cool, like maybe marble. Oh, that's not really that cool. Oh, maybe ice. That looks kind of cool. Um, yeah, let's go for ice. Okay, so we got some... A black ice wrecking ball, we could make it a different color. Let's make it, let's just have it white. White ice wrecking ball. Okay, so let's call this bit the ball. Can't type. Okay, and then let's group these two together because this is gonna be our wrecking ball. Uh, and I'll leave the button in the workspace. Okay, so we're gonna take the ball well, we're going to move it to the move it to the point where you want it to end up, because this is going to help us calculate how long you want the rope to be. So if I want it to be there, first let's add the rope, and we can work out the length, and then we can move it somewhere else, and we'll have the correct length for it to swing there. So let's add a rope. So if we go inside hanger, we can add an attachment. If we go inside ball, we can add an attachment, and this is just what the rope's going to uh, connect to. And then if we go into hanger and we add a rope constraint, we go down in rope constraint to the attachments and we just select each one of these. You'll see that a rope is formed in between them. Uh, let's make this rope a bit more. Let's make it, oh, that's a bit too big. Uh, let's make it 0.25 and we'll just have it black because it's not that important. So the current distance is 25. So let's make its length 25. So that's how long it's gonna be. It's gonna swing down and hit here. So now we need to move the ball but we want the rope constraint to be within its limits. So you can see here it's within its limits. Here seems like a good place. So we've got the current distance is 25 and we want it to stay 25. So it's going to do a perfect swing this way. Let's move the button this. Oh, I do not know what that was. Okay, uh, nope. Let's move the button over here just so we can see uh, it hitting lots of things. Let's move the wrecking ball a bit. All right. Okay, so it's going to end up down here. Okay, so now I want to make the blocks that the part's going to hit. So all of these so far are anchored. We're going to add a new part, and this part is not going to be anchored. We're going to call this bit just a... Um, we'll just leave it as part, that's fine. Okay, so this is 4 by one by 2 Let's duplicate it and move it in two blocks. Let's keep doing that. Let's do that five times. Then I'm going to grab all of them, group them together. Let's call this the wall. Okay, I'm going to move with a one stud now because I don't. Two is a bit too much. Let's duplicate that another five times. Um, let's grab all the parts and just do it once more. So now we know that we've got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, 50? 50 parts there, which can all be knocked over. Okay, so now each one of these parts I think might be a cooler effect if they didn't have any mass, so 
make these massless. Uh, and then I make sure this ball has a good amount of mass. So if I click custom physical properties, I'm going to just change the density up to one. That will increase its mass. Okay, so if we run this now, you'll see that the ball should fall and hit the wall. That's what I hope will happen. Uh, ah, of course, silly me. Okay, so I've anchored this ball. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay, unanchor that so it can swing freely, and then when we play it, hopefully the ball will fall and hit the blocks. Oh, look at that! That was cool. Okay, so we've got... That's hit the wall <laughs> perfectly. Uh, the rope doesn't appear, I've noticed, and obviously we want it to work when the button is hit. So, for now, let's anchor this. We need to make sure the rope appears. So if you go inside the rope, then you can click on visible. That just means the rope will appear um, when it's running the simulation. Uh, let's move the wall a little bit because I realize that's not in line. Uh, that's going to need 0.5. Okay, we'll move that to there. Now, I think that it might be cool if we have the button here, you press it, and then psh, and it swings into you. That's my thought. Okay, so let's make the button. So if we go into the button and we add in a click detector, and then we add in a script into the button. So first, let's create a variable for the wrecking ball. Okay, and then let's create a variable for the actual ball. So that's going to be wrecking ball dot ball. Okay, so now we want to connect to the event of the click detector. So if I do script dot parent, which is this button dot click detector, and then the event I think is ah mouse click. Okay, so we connect to mouse click, and we connect, add it in a function. Okay, so in here I think it gives you the player who's clicking it. So I'll just put an argument there, but I don't think we're going to use it. Okay, so when the click detector is clicked, we're going to have the ball become unanchored, and it's going to fall down and hit all the blocks. So let's just unanchor the ball when this is clicked. So make anchored equals to false. There we go. Save our work. So now, if I play it from here, I walk up to this part and I click it, the ball will swing, or at least it will look like it's swinging, but it's just stop being anchored hit all the parts and they should fly kind of near us so let's try it out click the button and it's hit all the parts out like a wrecking ball okay so there we go we've got the main kind of ball swinging action all sorted so I'm gonna increase this swing because I feel like this is not enough so <laughs> I want to make it swing even more let's just try and get it into the bounds there we go. I'm going to have it there instead, I think. And now I'm going to make it so this wall respawns every time I press the button, because I'd quite like to be able to do it multiple times, to be honest. Okay, so I want to create a clone of the wall. So if I go clone wall, is the wall clone. Okay, so when you click it, I want to do workspace.wall destroy clone wall dot parent is equal to workspace. So we've redone the wall and then we only need to set the position to where it originally was so let's first get the original position so we've got the original position and then we want to set the ball's C frame to be the original position that it was in so when we click the button it's gonna move the ball back destroy the wall put the clone back unanchor the ball and it will fall and hit us the last thing we want to do is make sure we clone this wall again clone wall is equal to clone wall clone there we go so now when I click the button hopefully it will restart everything and swing and I should be able to do it multiple times first time let's click it again and see what happens Whoa, that was cool because it's got a kind of swing on the side let's try it again there we go so now you have an infinite wrecking ball button you can click <laughs> oh that's so satisfying there we go and there we go we've created an infinite wrecking ball I think for the final touch I just want to make the wrecking ball a different color so let's set the ball dot brick color to be a random brick color let's just try it again okay ready 
Okay, now something cool that we could do. Okay, let's click this and then let's pause the simulation. Oh, that was kind of bad. Kind of cool though. Let's try again. Oh, I need to play. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, let's take that. So, we go into Wrecking Ball and Wall and we copy them. Let's head back into the workspace and now we've got the cool little effect of our wall being being destroyed. Now if we search for a noob, okay, uh, and then let's make him look kind of scared. Kind of looks like he's weighing himself. That's not what I wanted. Uh, let's find a good one. Oh, I love that one. Yes. <laughs> and there we go. We've created a little noob scene. I just realized this wall is floating, so I'm just going to move that down. There we go. And then let's make the floor. Let's have it grass. Uh, we've, cre <laughs> we've created a cool little scene with a noob, and he's about to be hit by a wrecking ball. That's how you make a wrecking ball in Roblox connected to a button uh, that you can infinitely play. You can make the wrecking ball as big as you'd like, you can do other facts, add fire, add explosions, and then afterwards you can pause inside studio to get a cool effect, a cool image. And yeah, there we go. That's going to be the end of the video for today. I really hope you enjoyed. Uh, we did a little bit of scripting in this one, so we're going to be doing some more in the future that involve even harder scripting. We're going to be making some really cool things, so stick around, like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I will catch you in the next one.